Mass is over. Please remain in your seats until our priest celebrant leaves the church. Please do not wipe off your chairs to dry them after using disinfectant wipes. This diminishes the effectiveness of the chemicals used in the wipes. Air drying is the best way to kill any viruses. Do not leave trash or used wipes in the church. Trash containers are available outside the church doors. Finally, we have this important announcement. Beloved parishioners of OLGC, it is brought to our attention that some of you are being asked to donate money to unofficial second collections. Per diocesan guidelines, unless a second collection is publicly announced by the diocese or by this parish, a collection is not official. All of our second collections are approved by the bishop. We are thankful for our faithful and generous parishioners. It hurts us to know that people may be taking advantage of your kind hearts. If you have been approached by people here or in the community asking for money for an unauthorized collection, please be cautious. You will know if collections are official when we make a public statement and the money is collected through the offertory. Second collections are approved by the DAS. Diocese is submitted to the Diocesan Finance Committee for office. Thank you for your attention. Church from the snares of the enemy and from all adversity. 
Shield too each one of us by your constant protection, so that, supported by your example and your aid, we may be able to live piously, to die in holiness, and to obtain eternal happiness in heaven. Amen. Dear God of all the living, you sent your Son Jesus to heal us from illness and sin. We turn to his healing power in this time of anxiety over the pandemic of this potentially deadly virus. Saint Damien and Saint Mary of Cope dedicated their lives to service of those who have an infectious disease. Saint Mary Ann Cope said, I am not afraid of any disease because she was confident of your power to save. At the same time, she took prudent precautions of hygiene to assure that she and her sisters would not be infected. Let us learn from this example to put our trust in you, to save us from the ravages of disease, and to take prudent measures to prevent its spread. Guide us to know when to isolate ourselves from the possibility of infection, but never let anyone be left without the care and concern of others in our community. As our Diocese of Honolulu has been dedicated to the Divine Mercy, we pray with confidence, Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. Generous and loving Creator, you have called us to Maloma Ikumakana. As disciples of your Son, we ask that your Spirit open our minds and hearts to more deeply appreciate your countless blessings. Increase your transforming spirit within us so as to nurture our call to stewardship as a way of life marked always by faithful prayer, service to others, and generous giving. With the Kokua of St. Mary Ann and St. Damien, teach us to be good stewards so we may return a hundredfold the Makana entrusted to us. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please stand.
filled to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruit of your redemption, who live in many with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. When Moses came to the people and related all the words and ordinances of the Lord, they all answered with one voice, We will do everything that the Lord has told us. Moses then wrote down all the words of the Lord, and rising early the next day, he erected at the foot of the mountain an altar and twelve pillars for the twelve tribes of Israel. Then, having sent certain young men of the Israelites to offer holocausts and sacrifice young bulls as peace offerings to the Lord, Moses took half of the blood and put it in large bowls. The other half he splashed on the altar. Taking the Book of the Covenant, he read it aloud to the people, who answered, All that the Lord has said, we will heed and do. Then he took the blood and sprinkled it on the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words of his. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came as high priest of the good things that have come to be, passing through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made by hands, that is, not belonging to this creation, he entered once for all into the sanctuary, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of a heifer's ashes can sanctify those who are defiled so that their flesh is cleansed, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from dead works to worship the living God. For this reason, he is a mediator of a new covenant, since a death has taken place for the deliverance from transgressions under the first covenant. Those are called, they receive the promised eternal inheritance. The Word of the Lord. Say to the master of the house, the teacher says, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take this. This is my body. 
Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. After a singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. The young couple was very excited for the baptism of their first child, and they had gone through the preparation classes. And the pastor decided just to stop by their house and see how things were going. And so he said to the young father, Are you prepared for this solemn event? The father answered, I think I am. I have kuo pig, I have poi, I have lomi salmon, I have chicken long rice, and squid luau. And the pastor interrupted, No, I mean, are you spiritually prepared? He scratched his head and he said, Well, you know, I have two cases of whiskey. Do you think that's enough? <laughs> are we spiritually prepared? And not in that sense, for this great celebration. Are we even spiritually aware? Sometimes our reception of the Eucharist can become so routine that if you just go through the motion, come up, take it, and go back after eating it. And so the Church gives us every year this feast, the Feast of the Body and Blood of Christ, a time for us to reflect and to deepen our spiritual insight into the meaning of this great gift that God has given us. And so we have this opportunity to focus on the Eucharist and explore what it means. The Eucharist is like a diamond. You can look at it from a lot of different facets, a lot of different angles. First of all, it's a sacrament. And the outward signs of God's grace are the bread and wine that become, we Catholics believe, the body and blood of Christ. It is a point of our faith that makes us different from most all other Christians. We truly believe in the real presence of Christ, in the what looks like bread and wine, but with our eyes and faith we see the body and blood of Christ, who gives himself to us to nourish us spiritually for our journey in life. It's also a meal. Go and prepare a Passover. He was celebrating a meal with his disciples, and so we gather at a table to celebrate a meal. A meal in which we meet Jesus, who shares his life of grace with us. We celebrate with friends and parishioners this great meal. He took that Passover meal, very important for the Jewish faith, because it made present the freedom from slavery in Egypt. They weren't just remembering like, oh, remember when? They were remembering like when you smell some good food cooking and it takes you right back to your grandmother's kitchen. You become present there again. That's what the Passover was a celebration, making present the saving deeds of God at that meal. And so we make presents in this new covenant, the saving deeds of Christ in our life. It's a sacrifice. Christ took his, the wine and said, this is my blood poured out for you. It's the first act of that great drama we call the Passion unfolding. So that when he is finally up on that cross and his blood is flowing out, it's not just a brutal murder. It is not just capital punishment, but it is transformed by his self-offering of his blood for us. He becomes the lamb of sacrifice, 
the unblemished victim. Christ loved us so much that he handed himself over for us as a sacrificial offering to God. And so as we take the Eucharist, that love is infused into us. We unite our love with Christ's love, and we unite our sacrifice with his. And it is a thanksgiving. In fact, our word Eucharist comes from the Greek word that means to give thanks. Es charisto, you would say, in Greece, if someone gave you a gift. Thank you. And so it is a great thanksgiving for God's gift of His Son, Jesus, who brought us salvation. And each year we take a different aspect in our scriptures to focus on. And this year we focus on the idea of covenants. What is a covenant? If we go back to the prophet Jeremiah, he says, this is God speaking, this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. So in that covenant of the Old Testament, God enters into a special relationship with his people Israel. And in turn, we in the New Covenant enter into a special relationship with our God. We say, as the Hebrew people said, all that the Lord has said, we will heed and do. So we have two covenants, the Old Covenant, Moses coming down from Sinai with the Ten Commandments, and it's ratified in the blood that he sprinkles on the people and pours on the altar. Blood is a sign of life. Blood means life for the ancient Israelites. And so you ratify it in the blood of life to make it stick so that both parts, people, are guaranteed they're going to stick to the covenant. It's irrevocable. And so in the new covenant, we don't use the blood of animals. We receive the blood of Christ to ratify this new covenant of love with God. This is the blood of the covenant which will be shed for many, he tells us in the gospel. Here it is not sprinkled. It's taken, it's given to us to be taken in so that we partake of the life of Christ, so that we become ever deeper part of the body of Christ we were baptized to be. And this is a special covenant because Jesus' death took place to deliver us from our sins. He offers us a relief from the power of sin and he offers us freedom as the children of God. And so as we participate in the Eucharist, we share in this covenant. We come to our Sunday gathering. We're invited into communion. We shape one body so that Jesus can become a part of us, enter our lives, and help us to live our lives with his love and support. And so he gives us to him, himself to us. Why? So that we can give ourselves to each other, to support one another in life and growth in faith. And so, as the pastor asked the young couple preparing for baptism, are you spiritually prepared? Are you spiritually prepared for this great feast we celebrate today? This feast of covenants. You know, sometimes we need to step back and reflect we're not just coming to Mass as an obligation. We're coming to an important celebration. And so we should prepare throughout the week for this high point of our faith. We should make it a daily routine to examine our conscience. How we live the commandment of God to love ourselves and our neighbor and to love God with our whole self. As we go throughout the day, have we loved those around us that we have encountered? Have we been faithful to our daily responsibilities? 
as we close the evening, we might ask God's forgiveness with an examine of conscience and a confidier. And if during that time we realize we have a serious sin, we might think of going to confession the next weekend before coming to receive the Eucharist. That's kind of like our distant preparation. Also reading the scriptures during the week so that we're not just hearing them for the first time on Sunday. We've meditated and thought about what they're telling us so that we can compare that to the homily and what the priest is trying to tell us. Then there's the proximate preparation. When we get up in the morning on a Sunday to reverently get dressed, are we wearing what's appropriate to meet Christ at the table? Are we prayerfully recollecting ourselves, especially as we drive on the crazy freeways and roads to get here? Are we putting ourselves in a space of receptiveness to receive the Lord? And then there's the immediate preparation when we get here and begin the celebration. We first ask what? God to forgive our sins. Lord, have mercy on us. Then we give glory to God for all of his many blessings. Then we listen to him speak to us in the words of scripture. We come to the altar after that with great reverence to receive him. We bow out of reverence. And then the minister gives us the Eucharist, the body of Christ. And what do we say? Amen. What does that mean? Yes, it is. I believe it is so, certainly. So when you come out, if you're not saying amen, do you really believe you're receiving the body of Christ? Sometimes I wonder when people just take it from me and walk away. We need to ratify we're part of this covenant. The body of Christ? Amen. amen. I believe it's so. And I'm a part of that body of Christ as I take him in. And so we have a lot of ways that we prepare for this great celebration. This is my body. This is my blood of the covenant. Jesus didn't just say those words. He lived by them. He lived the life of giving himself to us, up to giving his life there on the cross. And so as our part in the covenant, we are called to do the same, to give ourselves to those around us in need each day, to reflect on this great mystery that we have given, been given, and to put our lives in love and service, because it is the Eucharist that gives us strength spiritually to do that. God, we do that. It doesn't have to be in some great act. You know, you're busy doing some mechanical thing in the garage and the, your son comes and says, Dad, can you play with me? No, I'd rather not, but yeah, I'll we'll play with you. Mom's just finishing up dinner and your daughter comes and says, Mom, can you help me with my homework? Well, I got things to know you. You put things down and you meet the need there. The phone rings and the neighbor says, I really need to talk to you. You put down the remote, turn on the mute, and you listen intently, being present. Small ways in which we continue to give ourselves to each other in the same way that Jesus gave him to uh, himself to us. So, as we receive and say amen, then we are dismissed. Ite misa es, the old Latin. Go, you are sent. We are sent to bear the Christ we have received into the needy world around us. Amen. Amen.
Remember when your church spread throughout the world and bring courage to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Larry, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all who pray with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her son, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit the co-heirs of eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor be yours forever and ever. Amen. as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostle, that he is he. My peace is my gift to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her unity and peace in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. Amen. We offer each other a sign of that